Hey class, so let's just get started with blocking out some 10 basic shapes just to get you back in the modeling mood. So before we begin, let's make a new project that will hold all of the files for this opening um, project. So eventually we're gonna add a rig, a bouncing ball rig. We're going to um, animate it. And it's a great idea to create a new project folder um, by going to File and Project Window. Um, I had already created this project folder, but you hit New. And make sure the location is in the spot where it makes sense for your computer. And then remember that creating a project folder is a two-step process. After you create it, then you need to go back and set that project. So now I'm gonna save my file. I'm going to save as a Maya ASCII. The difference between Maya Binary and ASCII is that ASCII saves a text file that can be um, edited later using a text editor um, in case you have any corruption to your file. So I've been using ASCII for a while, but it really isn't a big deal either way. You just have to be consistent. So for the first one, we're going to create a cylinder from a cube and add divisions at the 50% mark or basically create it with four divisions. So I'll show you two different ways. The first way is to make a cube and then go up to mesh and smooth. You can do it by one division or you can do it by two divisions. Um, this is low poly, so I'm going to do it that way. I'm gonna select the vertices at the top and the bottom and scale in just one direction. And then I'm gonna select all the center vertices and just use that two direction scale, which is the square, to scale them in. You could also use the um, three direction scale as well. All right, and then um, since this is kind of just a stylized piece, I'm going to um, hide my grid and then use the multi-cut tool. And under multi-cut options, I'm gonna use that snap step and press control and shift to snap it. Shift snaps and I believe control makes the cut all the way around. So that's the very first way. The second way would be to make a cylinder. I'm gonna make it a few heights for my axis divisions, um, let's try eight. So there's four height divisions. Um, so that's four faces on the height. And then you can see that the most important part was that I kept the cap divisions. And now I'm gonna go in, select by edge, and delete every other cap division. So now um, you got to remember which ones you did on each side to make sure that they're the same and that you're not um, forgetting. So now you can see that we've got a similar situation, but I'm going to show you it one more time um, without with just one cap division. So it looks exactly the same. So now change it back to one, move this guy over. And now you'll see that I have these ones. So select by edges, delete every other one. Make sure that you're doing the same on each side, which I did not do. There we go. And command and delete. So remember that you do command and delete to um, delete edges and make sure the vertices are um, gone too. All right, so that's the first one. Let's move on to the second. Next, we're going to make a sphere from a cube and we're gonna make sure that it has all quads all around it. Um, the reason we're going to make this is so that it doesn't have a pole at the top and the bottom of the sphere. Um, sometimes that pole can be useful, but um, I want to make sure that you can also make one without it. And when we're in ZBrush, we'll basically be using no pole. So you make a cube go to Mesh and Smooth. And for this, I'm gonna leave it at the default of two. Um, and now we can see that we can preview. So hard surface mode, if you remember, is the number one. Uh, smooth preview mode is when you press the number three. So um, make sure that you remember that you have a smooth surface and a hard surface mode. 
So I'm going to make one more of these cubes and just show you what it looks like if we just smooth by one division and have more of a low poly look. So smooth that. I'm going to scale it up by pressing the R key. And again, I'm just going to hit three for smooth preview. And you can see that um, I think the one with more divisions has a tiny bit more volume in it. Um, but otherwise they're virtually identical. One is just a little more low poly for you. Okay, for our next one, um, we're gonna make a cube with a round hole in it. We're gonna use bevel, bridge, and make sure all of our faces are quads. So we'll start the same by creating a cube. Um, if you go back into your channel box layer editor and go to inputs, you can change the amount of subdivisions to two there. So that's one way of like initializing a new cube. The other way is to go into your create and cube menu and then um, change your subdivision levels there. Just kind of know that um, once you change your options here, you're going to have to go back and change them back. Um, so it's like a couple more steps to change them back. You actually, I believe, have to hit apply. Um, there you go. To make sure that it's that way in the future. Okay, so now the main thing that we're going to be doing is selecting a single vertex and beveling it. I'm going to change my width to 0.5, so that means half of that edge length is going to be beveled. So that makes a much larger um, hole. And then I'm going to use my multi-cut tool and I'm going to cut these edges that I, or faces that I just created in half because right now they are end gons but if I cut these in half, each of these faces will become um, quads which is perfect for what we want. Now we can select those new vertices that we created and scale them up. And just a side note that my multi-cut tool was set to be at 50% as a snap setting. So I'm holding down shift to get the middle and then um, doing a, the cut to the outside corner. Okay, and then here I decided since I had already created um, one side of this, I'm just going to select the object itself and use duplicate special and mirror it across to make the other side. So whenever I duplicate special, I almost always um, choose the wrong way in the first direction. So this time I chose negative one, so that means that it's going to move my object to the negative one of x. So multiply all those x values by negative one. And basically what it made was a duplicate of the exact same object just in place. So let's not do that. Let's try a different one. I'm going to try z this time. There we go. Perfect. So now I have two objects and I'm going to combine them. And what combining does is put some like it as the same object, but it doesn't actually merge the vertices together. So I'm going to have to go do that as well. So select all the vertices and merge them. Um, I noticed I missed a few. So go back, select the vertices again, or hit repeat, which is G and merge them again. All right. And now I can select these faces and delete them. Select the outside edge and then bridge. Now you might've been thinking there's another way of doing this. And of course there's 8,000 ways of doing this. Another way would be to go back to my initial cube, um, click on that vertex, bevel it again and I'm gonna give it a width of 0.5. Go back to my multi-cut tool. Make sure that snap step option is on. So when I press shift, see that black dot is showing up and that's where the 50% is. And then I'm releasing shift so I can go and click in the corner. 
Okay, and now I can select all the faces I don't need, get rid of that center face, um, select all the vertices at once, and then scale them up. And then um, now I'm just gonna extrude. Oh, before I do that, I'm gonna um, use my multi-cut tool and um, hold down control, and you can see it'll make a nice edge loop around that circle, um, which will be nice. Go into object mode, I'm going to extrude out. And um, because I'm extruding the wrong way, it turned all of my faces inside out, which is easy to fix. It's mesh display and reverse. So um, now we've got all of our, uh, our hole in place and our edges. I'm just gonna bevel them again, just those outer edges at like 0.05. I'm gonna give it two segments, which will give it more of a um, holding edge, because remember any curve or change um, takes three points. So if we add two additional segments, line segments to the corners, it'll give us a better hold. If you want a softer um, curve on the corners, I would stick with one extra segment though. So it's up to you and your design. Um, in your design. Okay, and I'm just going back and adding a little more bevel to both of these, just so you can see. Double clicking on an edge loop will select the entire edge. I'm just repeating some of these because I'm sure some of you have forgotten. It was a long break. Um, and then just shift clicking, we'll get the other um, edges. So now if you see, if I go back into object select mode, you can see what it looks like when I've um, gone into smooth preview, which is the number three. So hard surface is one, smooth preview is three. I'm gonna add one more um, holding edge around the outside by pressing control with my multi-cut tool. And now when I press um, three to get smooth preview, you'll see it's a nice, um, a nice holding edge. Now there's one more way that we could create this cube with a hole in it, and that's using Boolean difference. So I'm gonna create a cube and I'm going to scale it up and create a cylinder in the middle of it. Now, a couple things just to remember that this is the scale overall, whereas these little squares on the side scale in two directions and then the actual handle scale in one direction. So just a quick reminder for you guys. Um, so how I'm gonna Boolean is I'm gonna select the cube first, the order does matter, and go to Mesh, Boolean, and Difference. And you'll see right away, this just subtracted that cylinder from my cube. Um, one big problem is that it's definitely got a lot of end gons, so we don't want that. I think there's a way that we can do this though um, one more time so that we can have less end gons and turn it all into quads. So I'm gonna create my cube and I'm gonna use my multi-cut tool with my snap set at 50%. I'm gonna press Control Shift and then I'm gonna create this cylinder again. And note this cylinder has eight sides, so that's also working in my favor. Do wireframe on shaded so I can see what's happening and then select the cube, select the cylinder, and then do difference. So under the difference options, there's not a lot of great options there, but you'll see that since I added the extra edge loops, um, this actually multi-cuts pretty nicely. So I'm just gonna quickly multi-cut the top and the bottom, and then this is pretty good. So stay with me for one more minute while I 
quickly add the edge loops and add the holding edges to this. But after this, I'm going to um, explain the different options under Boolean. So my students from last semester didn't have this instruction, so, um, but the students from 2019 did. So just kind of bear with me if you are a 2020 student. Okay, and just moving it into place using the points, point snap and pivot point. Okay, so let's slow this back down and let's just look at our three options for Boolean. So if I go to Mesh, Booleans, notice there's these two lines on top of the menu. Remember that you can click those two lines, just a single click, and it will pop out that menu option for you, which is really nice. So I'm gonna select my cube, select my cylinder, and then do Boolean union. And what that does is combines the two objects, the two meshes, and it does a really nice job. Um, usually you get n-gons, which is why I don't, def I don't usually advocate using it, but you can definitely um, cut, use your multi-cut tool to cut into it. Okay, for the next one, I'm gonna show you Boolean difference. So we just did this. However, I wanna show you that the order of the, how you select your objects matters. So if I select the cylinder first, it's going to subtract the cube from the cylinder. So keep that in mind. And for the third one, it's Boolean intersection. And basically it just takes whatever meshes you have and finds where the intersection is and creates that mesh. So hopefully this will help. Um, we'll definitely be using some live Boolean in ZBrush. So just knowing the Boolean terms will help you going forward. For our next shape, we're going to revolve a shape. Now I didn't do this last semester with you guys. Um, so this will be new to some of you, but for some of the returning students, um, you guys hopefully will remember this. So we're going to go back into our file. I'm going to go to this, uh, the front view. So remember, you can switch the front view by hovering over it and pressing the space bar to switch between the two. And for this one, basically what we're going to do is draw a NURBS curve and then use the revolve function. So you could use an EP or a Bezier or even a CV curve. It's up to you. You definitely, definitely want to use grid snap and use the origin line as the very first point. Now, one thing to notice is that my first two points coming from the origin and my last two points going into the origin are at the same horizontal grid level. We do this so that we don't have pinching um, at the poles and I'll show you um, what happens when that happens. So now let's go to the surfaces menu and click on revolve and the option box next to it. That will bring up the revolve options. From here, we wanna make sure that our output geometry is polygons, since we're doing polygonal modeling rather than NURBS. Um, and we wanna make sure our faces are set to quads. And then voila, you have a revolved curve. Now, even though my two points leading into the origin were at the same level, the curve itself curved out of um, out of like the a flat line. And so we're getting a pinching at the pole here. Now that's not always bad. If you're doing modeling that's definitely not going to be 3D modeled or 3D printed, you should be okay. Um, depending on what you want to do with the model, that's fine to keep. If not, um, if you want to do it the correct way, what we're going to do is just make sure those last, that last line there is nice and flat. So easy to do using our scale tool and do one dimensional scaling. So I'm going to select by curve point and then just flatten using the scale tool and do this again, select by curve point for these, just the last two points and flatten. Oops, and I forgot to have grid snap on, so turn that off. 
And now what's really cool is this curve and this object are still linked. Because I haven't deleted history, I can make changes to the original curve and you'll see the curve um, changes made in the actual mesh itself. So I'm just trying to make kind of like a um, bowling pin type shape just by moving these control points. That's pretty good. When I've got what I like, I'm gonna freeze transformations and delete history. I always click both twice. Um, it's just a habit I got into, but you know, it's pretty simple. It's just a couple clicks. Okay, and now I'm just gonna move that pivot point and move it onto my grid. Okay, and once I move this, I'm gonna move on to the next video where I'll show you shapes um, five through the end.